What's going on everybody? Matt here with another wide open video. Uh, doing a little shot here in the wife's car. This is the 2023 uh, Kia Sportage, sorry. This is the 2023 Kia Sportage SX Prestige. We've been car shopping lately, so I've got a bunch of different names in my head. I'll get back to you on that part because uh, there may be something new coming to the channel, but I don't yet know what it is or when it will happen. Um, there's a new kiddo on the way, so the small back seat may not work so well anymore. I'll leave it at that. Still don't know yet what's, this, what's to come. But as far as the Kia Sportage, uh, this is kind of a continuation of the video on installing the hitch. So this would be a partial part three. It's also a rant and rave kind of video for the software and the technology in this particular vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna flip this around and kind of walk you through what I've gone through. And I've got some old clips from when I first was towing with this, uh, towing the jet ski. Uh, I wanna show you those as well in this video, but just kind of lay out basically some of the issues that I've had with this thing and some of the things that I have fallen in love with uh, through, well, right at a year's worth of ownership uh, in this 2023 Kia Sportage SX Prestige. So sit back, hang tight, we're going wide open. <laughs> So I found a huge flaw in the trailering abilities of the, uh, the Kia Sportage. Um, this thing is absolutely freaking out over me trying to back up. Uh, it's, it's not. <laughs> Golly. It just slammed on the brakes just then because I went too fast for its liking. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. All I'm trying to do is back out of my driveway in such a way that... Uh, and every time it does it, I have to... Uh, I don't even know if I'll be able to get out of my driveway. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna set you down. All right, so you saw there some of the issues that I've had with the backup system on this particular vehicle. Um, and I can turn off, let me flip the camera around here and I'll kind of talk you through what I'm work, or working with or working on and, and frustrated with. I'm also still in the process of cleaning out the car here, so please ignore the, uh, well, the bit of trash I gotta throw away, the Taco Bell packet and the kids' toys there. But right here in the center console, of course you have the drive mode selector and you can go through there, sport, normal, and smart mode. Uh, really, we put it in normal mode and leave it. Um, and then you have right here, this button, which is supposed to disable the parking sensors. So I'll turn that off. Now watch this. I put it in reverse they immediately come back on. And I have my backup camera back up here again. Because I'm in reverse. I can turn it off. And I go to drive. And they immediately come back on again. Why do you do this? <laughs> like with the, uh, the auto stop start, I can turn that off and it doesn't matter what I do with the vehicle. It will stay off and it's fine. But for whatever reason, every time you switch gear, every time you do something different with a transmission, uh, the parking sensors reactivate and it's incredibly annoying. Now, like I said, I have thoroughly enjoyed this vehicle. Um, I, I would recommend this vehicle to just about anybody uh, with a small family um, anybody who needs a fuel efficient, um, going back and forth to work rig, anybody who's headed off to college, uh, honestly, this is, this vehicle fits in so many situations, uh, for so many people, I would recommend it hands down, 
um, honestly, over a lot of the other vehicles in this segment. Uh, we're talking about the Escapes. We're talking about the uh, the the Rav Fours, um, the Forerunners, the uh, the CRVs. All those vehicles in that segment. Honestly, this one is this one has got to be in my top three. Now, I'm probably a little biased because I own one. But if you're not shopping Kia in this segment, you're missing out big time. Um, not to mention the five-year, 100,000-mile uh, powertrain warranty that this comes with. That's that, that in and of itself is almost worth, <laughs> worth shopping this first, honestly. Um, so it, it's, it, yeah, don't don't snooze on kia uh in particular the sportage if you're shopping the uh the downsize or the the what do they call it it's not compact or i guess it would be compact suv market the small suv cuv market this one needs to be on at least the go look at it go drive it list because oh my goodness uh it, it's been incredible but and, 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 and hear me out too, because I realize that 98% of the people who buy a Kia Sportage are not worried about towing. I totally get that. This does, however, lead the class in towing capability with over 1,600 pounds of towing uh, rating. So there's, there's, it has, it has the, uh, the ability to do it, but when you go to back up, you end up with issues like this and it's annoying it's it's thoroughly annoying i'm gonna flip this around and look through the settings again and see uh, with with you guys and see if there is a way to turn off those parking sensors i even found this to be the case with a luggage rack on the hitch so even if you're not towing but you have a receiver hitch back there and you have four people and a week's worth of stuff to travel with. Oh my goodness. Having one of those luggage carriers can be game changing for sure. It doesn't put anything on the roof, which increases wind resistance. It keeps everything down and around the backside of the vehicle, which means you maintain your fuel economy, at least for the most part. I mean, you add adding weight, so it's going to go down some, but it's not like having a brick on the roof of the car. It's huge to have that back there. Uh, and hugely beneficial. So let's flop this around here. I'll spin the camera back around again and show you guys and walk you guys through, walk myself through, trying to turn off these silly sensors that are on all the time. Ugh. All right, so I'm in the vehicle. I've got the AC on and running. So we're gonna go to setup because that just makes sense. We're gonna go to vehicle. And then we're going to, okay, driver assistance, forward safety, driver attention, warning, parking, parking safety. Let's try that. Okay. Surround view monitor auto on. Automatically activate surround view monitor when parking distance warning activates. Okay. Sets the properties of the parking safety system. Okay. Parking distance warning auto on. Automatically activates parking distance warning when driving at low speeds. Okay, so we want the warning turned off. Okay, now we have the surround view monitor should be, I'm gonna turn that off as well. Okay, so that, that would be the little display that comes up when you get close to something. So like, I'm gonna pull up here close to, okay, so there we go. We got close to the vehicle in front of me and, uh, and what it's telling me is with a surround view monitor on, bam, it turns the camera on to tell me, hey, you're getting kind of close to something. And it does the same thing in reverse as well. Of course, I'm not close to anything at the moment, so nothing's gonna come up. But that's, so it turns on the monitor automatically. I'm fine with that, that's, that's fine, I don't mind that. All right, rear active assist provides a warning and emergency braking when a risk of rear collision is detected while reversing. Okay, rear warning only provides just a warning when a risk of rear collision is detected while reversing. Okay, so this is the active assist, it applies the brakes. Okay, this is just the warning. 
Rear cross traffic safety, I'm fine with that. I like the rear view camera that sees, uh, what is it, like 120 degrees um, across behind you. It's super handy when you have that monster parked uh, in your driveway and trying to see around it when you're backing out. So let's do this. Let's, let's try this in steps. We're gonna go rear warning only. I'm gonna put the luggage rack back on the back. We're gonna turn, yep, we've got that on. Parking distance uh, warning auto on. I'm gonna leave that off, okay? It's it's lit up down here right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that off. I'm gonna put the luggage rack on it and let's try it and see what happens. All right, so there you have it. The luggage rack is on. It actually fits really nice and tightly to the back of the vehicle. I like that, how closely it fits. Uh, I don't know what brand this is. It's one that I just happened into, but uh, I would imagine that most of them fit that way on this particular vehicle because the hitch is tucked up underneath the back of the bumper once installed. I really like that. All right, so back in the car. Remember, we have the surround view monitor on. The camera, turn the camera on. That's fine, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. We have the rear active assist. That's off. Okay, so we want warning only. Only warning is what we want. So. Let's give it a shot. Bam, there it goes, it's just screaming. Now I'm gonna let off the brake. We're good. It's even yelling at me here, collision warning. Look out, you're running something over. But it doesn't stop the vehicle. It's amazing. So I found it. I figured it out. You guys helped me. There it is. Now, if I want it off completely, I can do disables parking safety functions, okay? So it's not gonna activate a warning. It's also not gonna activate the brakes, uh, which is really more what I want in this particular instance. So let me try that. Bam, okay. So, no collision warning on the dash. That's what changes. Okay, it's still screaming at me because that button is still on, right? Turn that off and all of a sudden it's not yelling anymore. It's amazing. It's not yelling at me. And I can back up, no problems, no brakes. So much better, so much better. And, oh, it did it again. So even with Okay, let me turn that off. Off. Even with this turned off, it still turns this on whenever you put it in reverse. Every time, for whatever reason, it's gonna do it. Honestly, I'm not thrilled with that part of it. However, I got the automatic braking thing fixed which is huge uh forgive me for sweating it's hot in texas even with the air on i'm still drenched but uh it it yeah having having the automatic braking thing turned off is massive uh and then having it tell me uh that that i'm about to hit something oh, okay yeah let's leave the warning on that's fine because this won't change when i plug in a trailer that's that's probably the thing that I guess I wish was built into this software. Um, trucks do it where they can sense that you have a trailer hooked up between the, the, the maybe the automatic suspension leveling or the seven way being plugged in, the four way being plugged in. They can sense the extra draw on the lights. They can sense the extra load on the truck itself. And good grief, a tow haul button. You turn tow haul on, and it turns the backup sensors off because people tow with their vehicles. <laughs> uh, my, my last daily driver before I had the Fusion was a Subaru Impreza and I had a hitch on it because I wanted a hitch on it because I towed the jet ski with it. Yes, I really did. Uh, sometimes people just want to tow things and when you have sensors and things like this that it, uh, again, I understand. I am one in a million when it comes to the typical buyer 
for a 2023 Kia Sportage SX Prestige, but it doesn't seem like it would be that much more difficult to build into the software an ability to sense when there's an extra load on the light circuit or if you are able to hit a tow haul button on here um, or, or some way to turn those things off automatically maybe. Thankfully, with your guys' help today, I was able to do it uh, and uh, you know figure out how to get it where it won't just slam me into the back seat. Uh, every time I go to back up, <sighs> just little little frustrating things like that. Honestly, that's probably the only complaint that I have about this vehicle. It's been incredible. I love the mileage. I love the comfort. I love the tech. And that's saying something. I'm not a tech person. This little glitch in the software could be fixed pretty easily. And like I said, we got it fixed today. But it's just something to think about when... Uh, when you're shopping around some of these vehicles, um, it, it, maybe it's not ever a huge deal for anybody other than me, but would I be doing my job if I didn't tell you about some of the little minute details of the 2023 Kia Sportage SX Prestige? Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, whether you're at the track, in the water, in the dirt, or over the road, however you live your life, be sure you live it wide open. We'll see you next time.